So I'd like to welcome everyone to another install installation of, of uh, Reynolds Company's Tech Talks. I think uh, the, the, the slide is a little confusing and says users group, but it's actually a Tech Talk today. Um, today's topic is, uh, is why Factory Talk links communication rocks. So we're trying to mix it up a little bit today. Um, but we're going to talk about Factory Talk links and, and a lot of the benefits and, and why everybody should be using it, hence um, it rocking. So, so let's get started. Um, but before we jump into the meat of the presentation, I'd like to, to make everyone aware of, of a, some upcoming uh, talks that we've got planned. Um, in the next month or so, uh, we've got two tech talks on our schedule. So on the 27th, we've got the E300 electronic overload, which should be um, very interesting that we're seeing a lot of demand for those product, that product now. And then November 3rd, we're ha we have an automotive, or I'm sorry, an automation fair preview uh, for uh, this year's automation fair, which is in Houston. So hopefully um, we'll see a, a great attendance uh, from our customers and partners. Um, so looking forward to that. And then uh, next week, um, we're going to have our final user group meeting, um, which is topic will be um, Logic's Echo. And so that's a that's probably one of the bigger releases that Rockwell's had uh, this fall. Um, Logic's Echo is the new emulation system for the high performance controllers, specifically right now the uh, the L8 controllers with the 5380 uh, support to come in the in the, in the future. So looking forward to those three topics and and uh, in any case and anytime you want to look at any of our any of our uh, past talks, uh, you can you can see that on our YouTube channel or you can uh, go to Reynolds online and uh, browse for them on our website as well. So uh, and there's a lot of good content um, on the line, by the way. So we've been doing a lot of these over the past couple of years. So um, we want to make a, a real big push here to, to uh, get everybody that uh, can make it to Automation Fair next month in Houston. It will be an in-person event. Um, so we look forward to seeing a lot of our customers and partners there. It's been a little while. So look forward to, the, um, to a good event next month. You can register at the link below. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you have probably been receiving emails from Rockwell about re registering. So I hope to see everybody out out there. Um, today, <clears throat> my name is David Newt, and uh, I'll be doing most of the presenting. I'm one of our automation specialists at the Reynolds Company, and I also have Mike Masterson to assist me as well um, as we talk about factory talk links. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so, you know, in, in automation systems, uh, the communication layer is the key, you know, that's the key to provide data from all of our automation sources, whether that's controllers or, or, or other smart devices or drives and, and getting that information to the clients or to, to, the, 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 uh, to whoever needs that information. So whether that would be a, a, uh, an HMI, a human machine interface or, or a manufacturing system or a historian or, or, or anything else, the key to making automation systems work is the communications. And so that's where Factory Talk uh, comes in. And that's what we'll be spending today talking about. So, so this uh, slide here gives us an idea of what our, the current Factory Talk and, or links uh, uh, products uh, look like. And so, so um, some of the names have changed over the years. Some of them haven't. Um, but we'll talk a little bit about, about all these um, and, and a few in particular we'll dive into a little more detail. The first one that everyone is probably aware of is, is RS Links Classic. And so RS Links Classic has been around since uh, the mid 90s. So uh, it's probably one of the most uh, used communication softwares in the industrial space um, of, of any vendor. Uh, it's included with a lot with most of Rockwell automation systems. And so that provides um, you know, direct communication from the controllers um, to various clients. 
uh, sources, and it does support OPC DA as well as as well as our, our native communications, uh, our native links communications. So that's probably the links that everyone knows. Um, it you know comes with Studio Five Thousand, comes with with um, uh, all all of the other programming uh, uh, softwares as well. So. So let's introduce or let's talk. We're going to spend most of the time today talking about our, our, our newer technologies. And so, so um, next up would be Factory Talk Links. And so Factory Talk Links has been around for a while, probably 10, 15 years. It was also known as a different name, um, formerly RS Links Enterprise. And so that, that's probably been out for about 15 years now. Um, originally uh, used uh, more on HMI systems, um, but as the controllers have gotten more capable um, and, uh, and needing more uh, advanced communications, Factory Talk Links is becoming our, our standard for, uh, for logics uh, communications as well. It's sort of, we're sort of in a transition point right now between RS Links Classic and Factory Talk Links. But as time goes on, Factory Talk Links will become sort of the data communication standard. Um, and, so, and so Factory Talk Links is, is in a larger box of, of, a, of, of, a, of a platform that we call Factory Talk Service Platform. And so the couple, the, the two other um, uh, softwares that are in that platform uh, we'll talk about now. So the, the OPC UA connector, um, and this is um, relatively new. This has been out for, for, for a couple of years now, but this gives us the ability to communicate using OPC UA, which we'll talk about in a little more detail. So, so uh, today, OPC UA is a step change of, of increased functionality uh, within OPC. And so we support that inside the Factory Talk Service platform. And um, live data as well. And live data is something that a lot of you have probably used, but may, you may not know its name. Um, but Factory Talk Live Data um, really provides a global namespace within Factory Talk software. And so the, the importance of that is we can take data that we get from Factory Talk Links, data we get from OPC UA. And that come and, and live data enables all those communications uh, with a global namespace um, that can be used throughout our whole system. And so, so that's a big part of, of, uh, of like what systems like Plant PAX uh, come together, et cetera. And then there's a few more things that sort of tie everything together. Um, the Factory Talk Links Gateway um, is kind of kind of um, delivers. The, um, data that we get from Factory Talk Links up to third-party software or, or OPC clients. So that could be um, other HMI systems, that could be MES systems, um, uh, uh, intelligent data systems, et cetera. And so that was um, uh, formerly Factory Talk Gateway, formerly RS Links Gateway, had a few name, different names uh, tied with it. And then another new a new product that we've introduced a couple of years ago is called the Data Bridge or Factory Talk Links Data Bridge, and, and so we'll find, kind of finish up with that one. But Data Bridge kind of gives you some additional uh, distributed functionality within uh, this the um, Factory Talk Service platform. Um, and then a couple more before we move on. Uh, Kept Server Enterprise is something you may be familiar with. Um, Kept Server Enterprise. Is is a is a Rockwell offering that allows us to communicate to third party um, control equipment, uh, and and typically that would be OPC. That would either be the kind of OPC Classic or OPC TA, uh, but also OPC UA as well. And so that's an offering um, that, that that Rockwell and and the Reynolds company can provide um, for a, as a third party OPC server, and then. Um, we won't really be talking about it today, but Factory Talk Links um, Com DTM is is also a, a new technology, and and this allows Factory Talk and Ethernet IP to communicate um, to process devices like uh, transmitters, um, uh, etc. 
And so as, as uh, those uh, instrument providers are starting to add Ethernet IP communication directly out of their devices, Factory Talk Links, Com, VTM sort of provides that uh, connection from the device all the way into the, to, to the uh, Factory Talk um, service platform. So let's kind of dive a little bit into each of these systems a little more. So, so RS Links Classic, um, still sort of the, the preferred communications for some of our older controllers. So you see the picture there of a PLC5 um, and old Compact Logics or a slick system. Um, you know, this is probably the most, the most uh, installed industrial software that's ever been. So it's been out for 30, this is a 30 plus year old uh, software. The light edition is included with pretty much all of Rockwell Automation software. If you do, it does support OPC uh, DA. If, uh, so if, if you've wanted that access, um, you, can, uh, you can purchase additional uh, accesses based on, on uh, whether you're, you have a remote or, or local clients. Um, <clears throat> and so there's a wide range of drivers here. It's not just ethernet. So there's serial control, uh, DF1, there's control net, device net, all those, all those uh, uh, different protocols and, and different media um, are supported within our Sync's Classic. So, so all the support for all the legacy stuff uh, you're going to look to uh, with our Sync's Classic. Um, so, Kept Server Enterprise. Um, Kept Server Enterprise is Rockwell's uh, OPC uh, server offering. So we can communicate to you know, hundreds of different uh, devices using Kept Server Enterprise, um, and it supports OPC DA and UA. Uh, it's included in PanelView Pluses, Plus Sevens. So um, if you need to talk, if you, so if you need that H, the PanelView to talk to a third party, uh, you're using Kept Server to do that. Um, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's something that would be offered as a purchase as opposed to RS Links Classic and Factory Talk Links that are free. Um, and so, so Kept Server Enterprise uses um, you know, Factory Talk Links to access Allen Bradley hardware. So, 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 you're, so if you use Kept Server Enterprise, you've also, you're also using Factory Talk Links to get there. So, so Factory Talk Links uh, is is the it's the uh, will become sort of the de facto communication uh, for all of that Umbrella control hardware. It's uh, they're just kind of slowly uh, being used more and more in place of RS Links Classic uh, version 34 of Studio 5000, which is not released yet, but when it does get released. Factory Talk Links will be the default communications for that. So that's a kind of a big change all the way up through 33. Um, Links is included, but RS Links Classic is the default communication software for, uh, for Studio 5000 up to this point. But, but as, as, we, as Rockwell releases version 34, I think next year, um, Factory Talk Links will become, become the uh, the default uh, communications. And a lot of that has to do with some of the high performance capabilities, uh, the, uh, the ability, the, uh, the support for some, some, uh, some, some advanced uh, communications tools uh, that, uh, that, that our, our uh, control logics controllers use as well as the plant PAX system. So, um, one thing, a couple of things on regarding connectivity, uh, but this, that's a, a benefit of links. Uh, you, can, you can put uh, dual instances of links on a single workstation. So if you do have a lot of, if you have a lot of data bandwidth or a lot of data needs, but you only have a single workstation, you can offload that uh, bandwidth into two, into two instances, which you couldn't do that for a links classic. Links Classic supported dual paths um, um, to one controller, but but not the dual instances on a single workstation. And um, Factory Talk Links has been optimized uh, for Control Logics redundancy, 
as well. So, so anytime you're using a redundant control logics, you really need to, to look at using factory talk links um, as your communications. And so, so some of the, um, you know, some of the benefits as well um, with uh, some of the newer controllers, uh, uh, Rockwell's introduced uh, something called extended tag properties. And so that, that makes it a little more seamless uh, to make, cha when you make changes in the controller, those, those properties become available to communications and in, uh, into uh, throughout the whole factory talk uh, uh, service platform. And so Logic's uh, extended tag properties are supported with links. So, so and, and uh, Plant PAX uses that extensively for uh, the uh, process libraries as well as the faceplates. So um, anytime you're using Plant PAX, it's really a, a requirement that you go with links over RSM's classic uh, for communications. Um, so um, again, redundant data servers uh, supported. Um, multiple instances on the same computer are supported. Um, and uh, links is now delivered for free on pretty much all of uh, Rockwell automation products. Um, and then uh, if you need gateways and things like that, then those are purchased extra work that, that we'll talk about. So what are, so let's just kind of cover the data sources uh, that are available with factory talk links. So, so primarily, so we've got the processors. So uh, it's designed, optimized for logics, but we can also, we can communicate with uh, some of the older processors out there as well. Um, we support redundant uh, controller paths, just like Lynx Classic. So, so if you wanted to, to have multiple communication paths set up to a controller, you can set that up in Lynx. Um, and again, it's, it's uh, optimized for, uh, re for control logics redundancy. Um, so, so you get that, that uh, optimized communications so you're not, you're not overburdening your network. Um, you can also communicate unsolicited messages or uh, message instructions or, or uh, uh, class three communications from a controller that's supported. Um, you know, traditionally you'd, you'd use class one, but, uh, but you, can, you can do unsolicited messaging. A um, couple of new things. So, um, so we support symbolic communications um, with the uh, Micro 800 controllers. So that's a big plus now um, for that communication as well as uh, the Power Monitor 5000. And um, also um, SIP energy communication. So that's, that's with our, uh, some of our drives and, uh, and some of the uh, protected relays. Uh, the E300s uh, use SIP energy to communicate. So we, we support that. We can bring that into, into the, uh, the services platform as well as uh, EDS parameters. And so that's, so that's used in some of the, the, the new DTM uh, communications uh, that, we, that we can support uh, field devices uh, and, to, and bring that into factory talk link. So a lot of different, different objects and uh, data sources that factory talk links uses um, in, in its in its network, and so this uh, this screen here is just a, a, a uh, an architecture um, overview to to show the scalability of links. So it supports on the left your local directory. So if you just got a all software on a single PC and uh, you know connected to an operation suite product, so that would be you know uh, view SE, view ME. Uh, historian, you can have that that local directory support there. Um, you also support um, you know, distributed data servers connected to one client or one server connected to multiple clients. Uh, and then you can also mix and match, so you can have multiple distributed clients and multiple servers. So it's very scalable, and uh, how it uh, how it communicates. So any any system using Control logics. Um, we highly, highly recommend using uh, factory talk links as as your communication up to your to your uh, your your data clients. So in so um, think about in in the uh, service platform. So in addition to 
Factory Talk Links was your was your communication directly to to Rockwell Products. Um, the Links OPC UA connector takes that another step and provides Factory Talk Links support for OPC UA and, and the ability to connect to OPC UA servers. And so this is something above and beyond what RSNC Classic uh, has the capability of doing. And so this is um, an, an OPC UA connector is included in the uh, in the uh, uh, Factory Talk Services platform. And so this so the the UA uh, connector allows up to 20 um, OPC uh, server connections and uh, and supports um, uh, High availability, which version six point two has been out for a while now, um, so there's nothing to purchase with it. This is just part part of 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 really the, the factory talk services platform, um, and it can coexist on the same computer or different computers as your uh, as your operational suite uh, products as well. So uh, so if you were so if, if, if you had a system where you're accessing third party information, uh, whether that's from controllers or, or maybe MCCs or, or drives or whatever, um, you, you, could, you would use kept server as your OPC server and then kept server serves the data to the OPC UA connector. And so that's how that information gets to the factory talk services platform. And that's how it gets to the other softwares, you know, your HMI, your historians, et cetera. And later on at the end, I will have a diagram that kind of puts all this together that uh, I think will, will be beneficial. So a little bit about your OPC, and we've been talking a lot about OPC, um, uh, a little bit about unified architecture. So, so, the, so unified architecture or UA was sort of the second kind of major release from OPC, the original, uh, OPC day, DA or classic was pretty much limited to PCs. It was, it was in the Windows environment. And so what OPC UA has done now, among other things, is broadened the hardware support. Uh, so you can communicate to uh, more than just sort of PCs. So you can, there's, there's, there's more device support, um, more OS support, and and support for things like uh, field devices, safety, uh, et cetera, that are in the future that aren't, aren't around yet. But kind of comparing that to factory talk and Ethernet IP, it's kind of interesting to look at the two. Um, so, you know, factory talk, Ethernet IP, we kind of have all that. We have, you know, we have uh, uh, common industrial protocol. We have SIP safety. We have other things, energy, SIP energy, things like that. That's kind of where OPC UA is headed, but they're not quite there yet. Um, it's it's harder to do to do all that with third party versus you know uh, all Rockwell Pro technology. But you can kind of see where that sits. And what's interesting about about the uh, the services platform is we support both. So so when you use the, the the services platform, you've got all the access to Rockwell stuff in addition to all this uh, all this uh, unified architecture communication. And again, this is another another scale scalability slide here. It's sort of flipped around from from what we looked at on on, uh, on factory talk links. So on the bottom there, uh, you've got an OPC UA server software. So that could be um, that could be uh, uh, kept server. That could be another third party uh, uh, OPC server. And then using the OPC UA connector uh, in factory talk links, and that provide, gets that data up to the operational suite, whether it's a single PC or multiple um, OPC servers or a fully distributed system. All, all these architectures are supported. And so the links gateway, um, so the, and the, this is known by in the, several different names, but if, if so if you had if you had uh, a third party client, whether that's an HMI, whether that's a historian or it's an MES system or something that needed data from links or from factory talk, 
then you would use the factory talk links gateway. And so the gateway supports both sort of classic DA and also the newer UA. Um, and it's available in different scalers as well as uh, uh, depending on, on your system. So where does it fit? Um, so think about the data sources at the bottom. You've got your, rock, your logics controllers. Uh, you may have third-party hardware. You may have RTUs. You may have third-party servers. So, so that's all handled by, fact, whether it's factory talk links for the Allen Bradley hardware or OPC for the third party. And then that gets, but then if you want to provide that data to what I would call the OPC clients or your, your, your third party HMIs, your analytic tools, third party historians, then you'd, you'd sort of fit the, R, the factory talk links gateway on top of links. And then that provides that information outside of the Rockwell factory talk world to the third party. And again, this is, uh, this is a similar slide, but sort of flipped upside down from the OPC UA slide. So we start with links. So everything is communicating with links. The idea with the, the, the links gateway is we have the data in links and now we need to get it to the third party. So, so we start with links and then we go to links gateway and then links gateway provides that OPC client uh, connectivity, whether it's a single node or, or a distributed um, architecture system. All, all uh, or anything in between. So uh, one more topic here is the Lynx data bridge. And this is also relatively new. That's been out for a couple of years. And uh, so what is data bridge? Well, it's, it, as its name implies, it connects data between multiple sources and, and multiple factory talk sources. So that could be control logics, that could be OPC data, or that could be kept server OPC data. And so what's nice about it, it's really used in larger systems where you need to set up maybe some distributed communications, uh, but maybe maybe it's between Rockwell and a third party controller, and so you can't really do messaging. Um, so you can set up a separate data bridge uh, it could be a separate computer. It could be uh, could be running on some existing factory talk uh, software computers, but it essentially just does. It's it acts like a gateway, um, and so it's a standalone gateway uh, as, a, as a as a software tool. So this this slide here kind of gives you a good idea. So you have a source and a destination um, uh, data data source and a data destination. So that could be, in this example, we've got our source is a third party OPC UA server. So that could be a, coming from, from almost anything. And then we wanna get that data into logics. And so through Factory Talk services, through the free OPC or a Factory Talk Links UA connector, we grab that data out of the server, UA server. And then in Factory Talk, in the data bridge, we just basically set up a memory map between the, the, uh, the source value tag Z and then give it a destination tag A. And then the, the factory, the data bridge does the rest. So, so it will provide that data from the source to the destination. And that can exist on its own outside of, of a, of a you know, factory talk links uh, node. So, so as you're distributing, as, as you're getting larger systems, this is a really nice way to, to, to uh, offset some of that, that uh, data load loading on your, on your network. And that concludes our presentation. Um, there was one other thing I'd like to show, uh, which is here, which is a uh, kind of a, a diagram of how all this kind of comes together. And I'm gonna need to make this a little smaller. Um, but as you can see, this is of all of the software we talked about today, uh, this is how it would exist in a, in a system. And so on the bottom layer here, you have your, your controllers. And in addition to that, we've kind of added uh, the protocols that, that are used. So, so between logics controllers are communicated, uh, communicate under a, a protocol called SIP or CIP, Common Industrial Protocol. 
And Factory Talk Links converts that to live data. And so remember, live data was the was the common global namespace that's used throughout all Factory Talk software. So once once uh, the, so the Factory Talk Links when that data gets converted to live data, your HMI server, vantage point, historian, gateways, all that all that data becomes on the global data uh, becomes available on the global namespace, and that's available throughout the system. And so the same thing uh, happens with Kept Server Enterprise. So Kept Server Enterprise is uh, talking to your third-party hardware, and so you know that could be any number of protocols. But once once that OPC data gets up to the services platform, then it also exists on that global namespace and can be used by all the software products above. And so here on the right is, is where the use case for Factory Talk Gateway comes in. So you could be connecting to third party applications, or if you have any of you that have a, an old RSV32 system, um, that actually used um, OPC DA client to, to, to communicate to, uh, to the rest of Rockwell software. So, so that's, that's why you, you had to use uh, Lynx Gateway with RSV32 systems. Um, so this is kind of it. This just kind of gives you the idea of, of how things go together. And so hopefully uh, it's been beneficial. I will check and see if we have any, any uh, questions in the chat. And don't see any. So um, I'd like to uh, thank everyone for attending and look forward to seeing you at Automation Fair. <laughs>